I should be on there now. Hello, Facebook <clears throat> audience. Waiting for my phone to flip so my Periscope folks can see me. Um, Prophet David Taylor here. And uh, glad to see you guys on this Sunday, September 2nd, the first Sunday in September. Hard to believe that we're already in the ninth month. Isn't it hard to believe that, that this year has flown by so fast until we're already in month nine, but we are. So uh, so we definitely want to hear what the Lord has to say because that's how we stay in step with the Spirit. That's how you stay in step with where God is, is by staying with the prophetic word, staying with the rhema word, stay, you know, making sure that you're in line with uh, what God is saying. So, hold on, I have to turn on another recording here. There we go. Alright, there's another recording there. Alright, so, Sunday, September 2nd, 2018. Uh, PDT, again, welcome to the broadcast. And, as always, my tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. All right? So, uh, when you're coming on to this broadcast, please like and share. Uh, please uh, like on uh, whatever social media platform you're watching it on. Or if you're listening to it on SoundCloud, or if you downloaded the podcast off of iTunes, uh, please give it a good rating, please. Like it and share it with other people so other people can hear, <clears throat> hear the prophetic word. If it's a blessing to you, it'll be a blessing to others. If you want to support me, I have a paypal.me link on my Periscope uh, profile. And then I always put the paypal.me link on my Facebook Live page. And then also um, Amazon Smile. Uh, if you go through the Amazon Smile website, then a portion of your uh, purchases will go to a charity of your choice. And uh, PDT NFP, a 501c3 company, so you can make some charitable donations that way. And then uh, I know I've been talking about my music for a long time, but you can always support me by watching my music, my YouTube videos, and then uh, getting them on iTunes as well. If you want to know where to find me, uh, the way you find me is the best way to find me is the hashtag PDT, because I hashtag PDT everything that I do. So that's always the fastest way to find me online. So just look up hashtag PDT and you can find anywhere I've been online because all my stuff has that tag. I'm on this time every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live and Periscope. And now I've, I post uh, on SoundCloud so you can hear uh, the thing. And I'm working on getting a podcast on iTunes. And then I'm thinking about doing a, a, a YouTube live broadcast simultaneously with this, too. I have to see if I can work that out. But I'm thinking about going there, too. And um, so I'm here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on the second Thursday of every month, I'm on at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time with a teaching called No More Genies. And No More Genies is where we deal with the genie concept of God. Because the genie concept of God has messed up a lot of people. Uh, messed up a lot of people to the point of losing their lives or the lives of their children. Because when you've got a genie concept of God, that concept is all wrong and it's not biblical. So I specifically deal with that. That's more than I can deal with in a half hour. So I do that teaching once a month on every second Thursday on all these same channels at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. Okay, so let's get into today's word. Let's get into today's prophetic word from the Lord. So as always, I always pray before I come on and ask the Holy Ghost, what is it that he wants me to deliver? Because it's about what the Lord is saying. Okay, Father speaks to Jesus in heaven, and Jesus speaks to the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost speaks through us. That's them, that's not me. Okay, to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. It's not my spirit talking, me, David. It's the Spirit of God talking. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, so if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. So I always pray before I come on and ask the Lord, what is it that you have for your people? And today, the word that the Spirit of God gave me was mercy. That's right, mercy. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at our, uh, 
Our uh, root scripture is going to be Psalm 136. And we're going to look at uh, that scripture because it's replete with the phrase for his mercy endures forever. So Psalm 136. Now Psalm is right in the middle of the Bible. It's one of the biggest books in the Bible. It's not actually the biggest book. Uh, that would be either Isaiah or Jeremiah. I have to check that. I know Jeremiah is uh, probably the biggest book. But Psalms is one of the biggest books in the Bible, and it's mostly music. Okay? So we're looking at Psalm 136. I'm reading out of the King James Version, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, because his mercy endures forever. Uh, to him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. And then it goes on all throughout that chapter. To him that made great lights, the sun to rule by day, moon and stars to rule by night. To him that smote Egypt and their firstborn, brought out Israel from among them. Now, if you understand anything about the Psalms, you understand that many of the Psalms are written in what we call a call and response pattern that's very common among Africans and African Americans. That's when the, the clergyman, the preacher, or the psalmist, the leader, the choir director, the worship team leader, they'll throw out a line and then the people answer. Then they throw out a line and the people answer. That's what's called the call and response style. Many of the psalms are written in that style, and this is one of them to where uh, in the Hebrew culture, for many of their religious services, it's called a cantor. And a cantor will get up there and sing in Hebrew and sing in English, and then as they sing a line, the people will answer. Okay, So that style goes all the way back to the psalms. So they would throw out and they would say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, of course, in Hebrew. And the people would say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And the people will say, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, is what the leader would say. And then they would answer, for his mercy endures forever. Okay? One of the, the power principles of the call and response is that it gets you involved in the worship. That's one of the reasons it's so powerful. When somebody is just talking at you and you don't get involved, that may not be as powerful of an experience. But when somebody's giving you a line and you answer, okay, that involves you, that draws you in, that's a much more powerful experience. Okay? So, what does mercy mean? Mercy means <clears throat> a relieving of the debt. Mercy means a foregoing of judgment. Mercy means, in very simple, practical terms, that you deserve something, but you don't get what you deserve. That's what mercy means. Okay, so if you want a practical example, let's say you're nine years old and you decided you wanted to steal a bike. So you went somewhere where people parked their bikes and somehow you picked a lock or you broke the lock and you you trying to climb on the bike and get away from it. Then you feel his hand on your collar and all of a sudden the grown person that that bike belongs to done caught you. And what you going to say when they got you right here? OK, you stealing a bike and that person says to you, all right, just get off my bike. Okay, I'm not going to call the cops. I'm not going to press charges. Okay, just get off my bike and just, you know, leave it alone. Go on about your business and leave my bike alone. That's mercy. They could have hit you. <laughs> they could have called the police. They could have had you arrested. There's a whole lot of things they could have done because you didn't have no business trying to take their bike. But they didn't give you what you did deserve. That's mercy. Okay? Now, one of the things that's so important about understanding mercy is because that's part of the core of God's character. And that's the difference between God and man. People want vengeance. People want to make sure that you pay for the wrong that you've done all the time. And the more wrong they know about, the more they want to see you get your comeuppance, as some might say. God is not like that. God knows what you're going to do before you do it. God already knew what your dirt was going to be before your mother and your father ever met. God already knew your flaws, your weaknesses. He already knew. And you know what he did? He reached out his hand and he offered mercy. 
He said, I'm going to offer you my mercy. Why? Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And so the scripture says that his mercy, his willingness to not bring judgment down on you and not give you what you deserve, endures. What does it mean to endure? Endure means to hang in there regardless of situation, circumstances, or conditions. Okay? When you endure something, that means I'm going through whatever I'm going through. I'm hanging in there. I'm dealing with it, and I'm not letting it go regardless of what's going on. That's what it means to endure. Okay? For a, another a practical example, that's how you get through college. Uh, if you love learning, if you love to go to school, you can definitely enjoy college, but there's going to be some points in your college career where you're going to have to endure. Because everybody's full of energy, like this time, this time of year, right around Labor Day, school is starting earlier for some people in elementary on the high school, elementary, junior high, high school level. So some people are start, starting their school year like August 15th. But if you're starting your college year, most colleges start in the last week of August and you got that Labor Day break and whatever. So if you notice... At the beginning of a school year, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of fist bumping. There's a lot of high-fiving. There's a lot of whoop. There's a lot of that in the air. Uh huh. I guarantee you by Thanksgiving, <laughs> that's going to be a little bit different. <laughs> and if you're going to make it through your first semester, if you're going to make it all the way to May, to the end of your spring semester, some stuff you're going to have to endure. Okay? You're going to have to hang in there regardless of the situation or the circumstances or what's going on. Well, the Bible says that the very mercy of God endures. It hangs in there. Good thing, too, because what good is mercy that doesn't hang in there? <laughs> the Bible says that his mercy hangs in there. And then it says forever. Now, what does forever mean? Many times when you think of forever, you think of a future event. But forever actually means from eternity past to eternity future. You have to understand that God has is not and never has been in time. Time was something that he created to help govern the earth realm, but he himself is not actually in time and he never has been in time. So everything with God is always right now. Now, I know that's going to hurt your brain. You have to come out of linear thinking when you're dealing with God. Everything with God is always right now. There's not no past, present, and future with God. Everything with God is right now. So when God says something, it happens as soon as he says it. But because we live in time, things, too, uh, things tend to unfold over the course of time. They do that. They unfold. Okay? But they were already there or else there would be nothing there to unfold. Think about that. Think about that. Okay? So God does not actually live in linear time like we do. And I know, again, that's going to hurt your brain. The more you think about that, because everything that we experience has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you think that life is made up of two 12-hour cycles, and the reason you think that is because that's the way you experience it. You experience life as two 12-hour cycles, and that's what you think the nature of reality is, but that's not true. The nature of reality is whatever God says. Whatever God says is true by definition. And he does not live in linear time. It's something he created so we could mark days on a calendar, so we could discern seasons, and so we could set up things we were going to do during the year. But he himself does not actually live in time. So when God says something, as soon as he says it, it happens. But it, it, for it to come in our lives, it has to unfold. It's like when your mother is pregnant with you, everything that you're going to be is forming there in the womb. But when you come out, you're just a baby. So who you are has to unfold as you grow. But it was already there when you were born or else it couldn't come out of you. Do you see what I mean? God already put it in you when he made you, when he formed you inside your mom. Because he's not in time. We are. So when the Bible says that his mercy endures forever, what that really means is that from eternity past, before there was ever anything but Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and eternity future where the Bible ends, that whole realm thing where they live in, he says his mercy is stretched all across that. Good God Almighty. His mercy is stretched way back before there was a back, <laughs> before anything that we understand began, and way out into where everything just keeps rolling and there's no end anymore. And the Bible says his mercy 
hangs in there, stretches out over all of that. Now, I want you to think about that. Now, why is that relevant? I'll tell you why that's relevant. Here's why. Because it doesn't matter how well you live, you're going to have challenges in life and you're going to have mistakes. People under the age of 20 say, get out my face. You old. You don't know what you're talking about. You ain't relevant. I got this. It ain't like it was when you was a kid. That's what people under 20 say. People over 40 say, oh, if I had known then what I know now. <laughs> you know why? Because you're not going to live a mistake-free life. You're not going to live a challenge-free life. You're not going to live in such a way where you get in a situation where you don't need mercy. It doesn't matter how well. Look at Job. If, you, if, you, if you've ever read the book of Job in the Bible, that's in the Old Testament. The Bible said that Job's moral and ethical game was so strong that his reputation reached up to heaven and God in heaven was bragging on him. That didn't stop the devil from coming after Job. Did you notice that? Did you notice that the strongest level of morals and ethics, so strong that God himself is bragging on you, didn't stop the devil from coming after him? Did you notice that? Because you are going to hit point, well, we need mercy every day because there's sin every day. But I mean, a lot of people feel like they're making all the right decisions and you might be making all the right decisions. You still going to come to a point where there ain't no way out if God don't have mercy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's news to you, but you are going to hit some points in your life where if the Lord don't deliver me, then ain't no deliverance. And it's going to be based on his mercy. It's going to be based on his goodness, not yours. Okay. So what God wants us to know as this psalm goes on is, is that when you look up and look at nature, you need to be seeing the mercy of God. I know you never thought about it that way, but pay attention to the words of the psalm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Thanks to God of God. Thanks to the Lord of lords. Him alone doeth great wonders. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. When you look up at that beautiful blue sky, if the skies are clear where you are, Look up at that beautiful blue sky. Think about his mercy. Him that stretched out the earth above the waters. Him that made the great lights, the sun to rule by day, moon and the stars to rule by night. That's mercy. Why is that mercy? Here it comes. Don't miss it. It's mercy because it's on whether you live right or not. Good God Almighty. It's mercy because it's on if you are awake or asleep. I want you to think about that. Think about what would happen if the sun went away. If the sun just moves a few degrees further away from us, we're going to freeze. If the sun just comes a few degrees closer to us, we're going to burn up. We're already experiencing global warming because we've destroyed the ozone layer, so more of the sun's rays are coming through. That's why everything is all of a sudden so much warmer and the polar caps are melting. Okay, But that sun is up there giving light and heat and it's there all the time. Sunset is an optical illusion. It does not exist. What happens is that the earth turns and we change our perspective on the sun. And when it's night here, it's daytime in Japan and vice versa. That sun is always on. That's the mercy of God. You know why? Because even if you cussing him underneath that sun, he don't take the sun down. He still lets you live underneath it. Even if you're using that very breath he gave you to cuss him with, he still gives you light and heat. Think about it. Think about the moon. If the moon moves out of place, what is that going to do to our gravity? What is that going to do to our tide? What is that going to do to the way we live life on Earth if gravity shifts or if all of a sudden there's more tsunami activity? Because tsunamis ain't no joke. When the water gets angry and the water comes across its natural boundaries, that's not a joke. What would we do if the moon comes out of place? Then a whole lot of things are, in terms of life on Earth goes away. And God has that moon right there all the time. Whether you wake or sleep, you do know, you do realize, however, that the moon is up during the day, right? It's just that the sun is so bright many times you can't see it. So the moon does not actually rise. That's an optical illusion. The sun and the moon are there all the time. But as the earth spins, we change our perspective on the sun and it's daytime somewhere else and you can see the moon better. But they're always there. Think about it. So the Bible is telling you that when you look at nature, when you look at the great works of God, that's his mercy because they're on all the time. We couldn't live if they weren't. Okay? Then it goes on to say in verse 10, 
to him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, and brought out Israel from among them, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, to him which divided the Red Sea into parts, made Israel to pass through the midst of it, overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, to him which led his people through the wilderness. Look at all that. Look at Israel's history. The psalm writer is telling you that when, when Jewish people, when Israel looks at their history, look at all the things that God did for them. But it doesn't have to be limited uh, to the Jewish people. Just think about all the things God has done for you and your family. That's his mercy. Okay? Why is that his mercy? Because we didn't deserve it. <laughs> the goodness that God has shown us was not based on deserve. It was not based on our goodness. It was not based on what we did. It was based on his goodness. And he led Israel out with a mighty hand. He did miracles for the nation of Israel like he's done for no other nation. God came down there and hand delivered them from Pharaoh. Hand delivered. Okay? Not because they were so good, because God was so good. Okay? And so, oh Lord. Phone, I, my phone ringing. Uh, so, I hope I didn't lose my periscope, folks. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> phone ring. So, um, so, it was based on the Lord's goodness. It was not based on what they did. Okay? And so that's the same way it's been in your life. If you just look back, if you look back over your life and you give your testimony, the goodness of God in your life has not been based on what you've done. It's not been based on what you deserve. Think about it. Okay? And so the Bible says that his mercy endures forever. So why is that relevant? Why did the Holy Ghost give me that? Because again, there might be some of you who are right now in situations where you feel like you in over your head. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there so many times in my life. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You literally would not believe you if I gave you my full testimony. You would not believe me. I'm going to say like Dr. Jasmine Schoolark and Bishop Jake's, Bishop Jake's church. You don't think I've been through nothing because I don't look like what I've been through because I'm a fire survivor. Okay, I have walked through flames that were 13 feet high and my whole apartment was burning to the ground. And me and my son got out without a scratch. That's just one instance. OK, because I was sleeping in my room and he banged on the door and ran out. I didn't know what was happening. I opened my door and literally everything around me was on fire to the ceiling, ceiling caving in, explosion at the front door. How did I get out of that? OK, I put my head, my, my arm in front of my hand like that. And I put my head down. and I ran out without a scratch. How did that happen? That was the mercy of God. That's just one thing I could tell you about me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You might be in it. That wasn't even our fault because our neighbor fell asleep with a cigarette. <laughs> and the cigarette set the couch on fire and we woke up and everything we had burned to the ground. So what I'm trying to tell you is you might be in a situation where you are in over your head. And you might be trying to figure out how did I get here? Well, whether you got there through your fault or not whether you made all the right decisions, whether you made some good, some bad, whether you messed up totally, the point is that you're in over your head. And what you need is something that's not going to give you what you deserve. Because if it was about what you deserved or about what you could do, you're going to get swallowed up. But the Bible says that God's ability to not give us what we deserve stretches from eternity past to eternity future. And every time we look up and look at the work of his hands, we can think about his mercy. And every time we think about other things he's delivered us from, we can think about his mercy because it hangs in there forever. Okay? So the point of this word this week is to give you encouragement if you feel like you in over your head. Some of you that are listening to me right now, you in over your head and it's 100% your fault. You messed up. Some of you listen to me right now, you in over your head because you're attached to somebody. And whatever's going on in their life, it's affecting your life. Okay? Some of you listen to me right now are like Job or Daniel or Joseph in the Bible. You have excellent character. You have excellent integrity. You have strong morals. You have strong ethics. You're not trying to, to cheat on nobody. You ain't trying to do violence to nobody. You ain't trying to be with nobody but your spouse. You live that, that clean life and you still find yourself in trouble. Okay? Well, I stopped by to tell you, to give you encouragement, that
that you can look up and call upon God for his mercy, his ability to not give you what you deserve, that stretches from eternity past to eternity future, that all we have to do is ask and believe. Ask and believe. Go before the Lord and ask and believe. Say, God, I need mercy. God, I need mercy. Okay? And when you talk to God, you can give him the details of your particular situation. That's not something you should do in public, just so you know. Some people get up in church and they tell them, mm, no, no, that's not the thing to do. When you want to talk about the details of your situation, you need to do that before the Lord. Just you and him. Okay? Of course, you can tell your close friends, your close circle, as much or as little as you want. But when you get, amen, amen. I see some people on Periscope saying they need your mercy, Lord. That's right. But when it's time to talk about the details, the, the nitty gritty, the, 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 you know, the, the facts about what's going on, you need to take them details before the Lord just between you and him and get real with him. Take off your mask. Take off your mask. Take off your facade. Don't pretend and say, God, this is where I am. This is what's going on in my life. This is how I'm feeling. I might be feeling guilty because I know this is my fault. Or I might be feeling frustrated because I know good and well this ain't my fault. It's the person I'm attached to is their fault. Or I might be feeling like things aren't fair. Like Joseph. Joseph got a false rape accusation and went to jail. And jail in his day was not jail as we understand it, bars in a, in a room. Jail in his day was a hole in the ground. So Joseph literally got thrown into a pit. Because Potiphar's wife tried to get with him and he said no. And then she turned around and said, this Hebrew tried to rape me. And Joseph was like, I wasn't trying to rape you. I was running away from you. And he still went to jail. So you might be in that kind of situation where you know good and well you didn't do nothing. Somebody lied on you, but you in jail anyway. Regardless of how you got to where you are, the thing to do is to ask God for mercy. And to get, when you get into the details, don't do that in public. Don't put that on social media. Don't stand up nowhere and tell all your business. Go to the Lord your God and tell him your business. Tell him the details and ask him for mercy. Say, God, I need your mercy in this situation. Now, you might be behind the eight ball financially. You might be there in a critical relationship, like with your parents, like with your spouse, like with your children. The thing to do is go to God and say, God, here's my situation, and I need your mercy. So right now, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I'm going to lead us in a prayer for mercy. What I want you to do, some stuff I'm going to tell you to repeat after me, and then I'm going to tell you when to go into your own details just with the Lord. Okay? So if you need mercy, repeat this prayer after me. Say, my Father, which art in heaven, reverence to your name. I come before you in the name of Jesus. And here's my situation. Now tell God the details right now. All right. Now say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord, and please be my help. Please be my rescuer. Oh God, please be my deliverer because I need mercy. I have no way out, Lord, but you. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, you know what happened? God heard you. God heard you because the word says he does. That that mercy is hanging in there. Okay? And now what you can expect to happen in your life is look for the manifestation of that mercy. Look for the hand of God to come down and intervene in your situation because we went before him in humility, grace, and truth and asked for his mercy. And now his hand is going to reach down in your situation and make the difference. And you know what you have to do after that happens? you got to give him the glory. you got to give him the glory. you got to give him the glory. Okay, that's something I've noticed that a lot of people don't teach anymore. You can't go before God and ask him for something. And then when it manifests, act like you did that. That's a huge mistake. You give God the glory. Okay, you give him the glory. You give him the credit. Because when the Lord intervenes on your behalf, then you'll see a difference that only God can make. And it will be no doubt in your mind as to how it happened. Okay, and when that happens, when the mercy of God manifests in the hand of God, 
come down and touch your situation. Give him the glory. Give him a shout. Give him a praise. Raise your hand. Give him a tithe. Give him an offering. Cry. Pour out your tears before him. Uh, let the fruit of your lips give thanks to his name. Okay? All right, God bless you. So that was our prophetic word for this week. I'm going to close out with a prayer. If anybody has a specific prayer request, put it on the screen now. If you want me to pray for your situation specifically. If not, I'll, I'll do a closing prayer and we'll be out for this week. And also, let me put my calendar up so I can give you the date for the No More Genies teaching. So do we have any specific prayer requests? Put them on the screen now if you have them. Okay. No request? Okay, I'm going to pray then a closing prayer. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, and a job. Okay, Sally says one of the job. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you for Sally, oh God, that you would have mercy upon her, oh God, and give her a job. Open the door for her financially and make it clear which door is opening from you. Oh God, make it clear which direction Sally should go to get that new job and give her that peace, that anointing, that, that knowing on the inside that this is of God and she can go forward and take it with confidence. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. More jobs. Okay. God, I pray for all those that are asking me to pray for jobs. Oh God, that you would open financial doors. In this economy, oh God, nothing is too hard for you because nothing that's happening is a surprise to you. Oh God, you know all about 2018 from the beginning to the end. So I ask for those, Lord, that are looking at employment that you would open very specific doors and that you would guide them to the place that they're supposed to be right now for employment. And that when they get the job, oh God, they would have that knowing, that witness on the inside that is from you. And that you would open your hand of mercy and deliver them financially through new employment. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen, y'all. Now remember, when those doors open and you get them jobs, give God the glory. Don't act like you did it. Don't walk around talking about what you did, okay? Give God the glory when he delivers you, okay? All right, so the next time I will be on for the No More Genies teaching is uh, Thursday, September 13th. 7 o'clock p.m., so that's the next time to catch that teaching. That'll be session number five. If you want to look up the previous No More Genies teaching, then look up hashtag PDT, hashtag NMG, and you can see them on my Facebook uh, page. Chandra Rose, please pray for a job. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to, to you before on behalf of Chandra. Oh, God, that you would open up a door to give her a job, because in these hard economic, economic times, oh, God, nothing is too hard for you. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, and promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but God is a judge. So I ask you to open up a door for Chandra Rose, oh God, and let her know, give her the witness in her spirit that the right job is from you. And so she'll know to go forward in confidence, knowing that you have had mercy with your mighty hand. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen, okay? So uh, that's Thursday, September 13th. I'll be on 7 o'clock p.m., with no more genies. Next Sunday, um, September 9th, I'll be on 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live and Periscope. And again, I've started, amen, Chandra, and I've started posting on SoundCloud, and I've started posting on YouTube. So you can, if you miss it live, you can check out Facebook Live or Periscope, but you can also go on my YouTube channel and see the replay there, and then you can also check out SoundCloud, and I'm working on getting the podcast. So so I can get the prophetic word out, all right? I'm starting at the beginning of this year. I'm starting at the beginning of January. So I want to make sure that, that everything I've done for, for uh, 2018 is available. All right, amen and amen. I see some amens on Periscope. Amens, God bless y'all. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for those of you that tuned in live. And God bless those of you that are listening to it and are going to check out the replay. I hope that this word has been a blessing to you. So uh, thank you so much for that. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. And remember that his mercy endures forever.